Jeff Joseph. I am the Senior Vice President of Communications and Strategic Relationships with the Consumer Electronics Association. Um, many of you know us well. We represent over 2,000 uh, uh, members who run the full gamut of consumer technology from large manufacturer companies to startups to retailers to everyone in between. We're probably best known each year for producing the international CES, the world's gathering place for everyone engaged in the business of technology. Um, I'm so excited to be here today. This is very great moment for anyone who's a tech enthusiast like me. We have the great Robert Scoble with us today, a blogger and tech enthusiast. Hey, um, how, are you doing? how are you? Welcome. Glad to have you. I'm you ha happy to be here. It's an honor being here in front of the consumer electronics industry. Well, we were glad to have you. You have one of the greatest jobs in the world. You describe it as you say you get to study the future of technology, which I love. Yeah. Uh, you probably know Robert from Rackspace and uh, Building 43, or like me, you may know him from his time at Microsoft when you were, should we say, famous or infamous for your honest views? Or both? Yes, in both. <laughs> <laughs> Depends who you ask. Exactly. exactly. That's, that's a good way to some, people some people wanted me uh, you know, promoted and some people wanted me fired. <laughs> <laughs> or promoted elsewhere, right? Um, you may know you. Um, some people call him the, the most powerful person in tech. Um, his first book, Naked Conversations, is a seminal book. Um, um, it, it, it discusses the way that businesses should talk with customers through blogs. Um, and his most recent book is uh, The Age of Context. Yeah, I got it up here on the screen. You have it on the screen. Let's pip it out a little bit. There you go. There you go. <laughs> the Age of Context. Um, uh, the mobile sensors data and the future of privacy. Um, yep. And for our CA members, uh, in addition to this discussion, Robert's going to be keynoting at our industry forum um, in Los Angeles on Tuesday, October 22nd. And finally, you can follow him at, at Scobalizer on uh, Twitter. So welcome. Thank you for being here. Thank you. So I have to ask the first question, what is the age of context? And what does it mean? What are you trying to, what are you trying to tell your readers? What are you trying well, to I talked to a lot of a lot of startups. I've interviewed more than five thousand, and GoPro, by the way, started two hundred yards from my house here in Half Moon Bay. So, so one of, one of the big booths at this year's uh, or at the twenty thirteen uh, uh, Consumer Electronics Show was the GoPro booth, and it was mobbed. Um, and I kept seeing a pattern about twenty months ago, or actually, really, it was five separate patterns, all happening on their own. So the the patterns were uh, social media is doubling. Uh, today, Twitter has a billion tweets every 36 to 48 hours, and that's doubling every 18 months or so. And so, uh, that's int anytime you have doubling things, uh, you know Moore's law, it means that new companies can happen, new uh, ideas can take form, and we've seen that over and over again in this industry. The second thing I noticed was location data was going up exponentially as well. You know, not just Foursquare check-ins. But Waze, which just got bought by Google for a billion, one point three billion dollars, and Google Maps and Navtech, and on and on and on, all the all the location data that we are putting into the system because we're carrying around a smartphone now. Um, add on to that, I started seeing a lot of weird database innovations. Uh, you know, the industry calls it big data. I I hate that name because it doesn't explain everything, but I. I I kept seeing new kinds of databases, not just MongoDB, which has gotten popular in the last couple of years for, with startups, but all, all sorts of graph databases and data innovation and then machine learning and, and on and on. And then add on to that, uh, this new wearable computer and the, the continued growth of the smartphone and, and putting new sensors into the smartphone. I mean, the, the new iPhone has a motion sensor on it that runs full time. Right. And add on uh, wearables. Yeah, wearables and mobile, and then add-on sensors. You know, I, I walked around the Consumer Electronics Show and saw like Prime Sense, uh, which is a 3D sensor company, and and uh, and on and on. I saw garden sensors and you know Nest thermostats and on and on. And you, so each of those five things is a trend onto itself. I mean, people just is, there's people who just cover social or just people who cover Internet of Things, which is really the the sensors and the wearable computer thing. Um, and I, I said I started noticing some companies are, were starting to join all five together and building what I call contextual systems. And for humans, that means um, two things. One, the products we're going to get are going to be highly personalized. I mean, if you put on the Oakley Airwave ski goggles, mm -hmm. um, you see your data, right? You don't see anybody else's data. If you put on my Google Glass, you see my stocks, my weather, my... Um, emails, my tweets, on and on, and it 
it really is personalized to me, and it's even learning my voice uh, over time, so it gets better and better serving me. Um, and the second thing it means for humans is uh, we're going to get assistive products. Uh, so if I get to follow you around for a month and really learn everything about you, whether you go to church or school or what kind of do you eat Thai food or you know what kind of foods you like um, and what kind of music you like and on and on. I can then be your assistant, and I can start saying, "Well, you know, next Tuesday's a great concert for you, <laughs> you know, right. or next uh, Wednesday you should, uh, you know, have do something for, special for lunch." And I can start getting ahead of you and telling you all sorts of stuff. And uh, you're starting to see systems do this, like Google Now. Uh, when I walk into an airport, it already has my plane ticket up in the in the Google Glass and and tells me what gate I need to go to and tells me whether the plane is on on time or not, um, and and that's all. And then we can talk. There's a couple things it means for business, but we can talk about those a little later. I'm mean, gonna come back to that in a minute about business and what, and what the implications there. But you know, and this is in the title of your book. But the the obvious question then is: so if I have these devices that are following me around and yeah. learning more and more about me, they're sharing big data, or, or is, I think you use the term weird data in your book. And we talk about some of these other data, but it's collecting all this information. Good lord! So is that is that are we headed towards Skynet from the Terminator? Or is, is this yeah. Good? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the obvious issues about privacy and and how oh. they opt out. So first, talk a little bit about how you. Well, let's talk about privacy. I mean, this Google Glass has a new kind of eye sensor here, and it's watching my eye full time. And he, so far, Google has not uh, shipped an SDK or an API for that. So developers are really struggling to use it and understand what it does. And Google itself hasn't shown off what that eye sensor does, and and refuses to answer questions about it. Really, I. Google. Uh, I was at Google's developer conference in June, and I asked uh, uh, Larry Page what this eye sensor did, and he didn't answer the question <laughs> in front of you know 7,000 developers, which you would think he would want the developers to start building software for it, but no, he's uh, he's not he's not there. Um, so if you know anything about the human eye, this is actually a 16 by 16 um, infrared sensor, and it's watching my pupil. And you know, if you get pulled over by a cop, what do they ask you to do? Hey, follow my finger. <laughs> you know, and they're looking at your eye to see how it moves and how it how it uh, adjusts itself. No idea um, what you're talking about. Never happened to me. <laughs> no well, you know, no comment. <laughs> <laughs> but it, this uh, sensor could know that I'm inebriated at some level, or it could know that I'm excited by something. You know, either uh, somebody good looking that just walked by, or a brand that I just saw that. Um, caught my eye on a shelf at a grocery store or something like that. Um, even General Motors I, I, at at CES, I had l dinner with uh, the exe with the um, uh, engineers from General Motors, and they were talking about using 3D sensors to watch your eyes because they can tell you're falling asleep before you even before your lids even close, and and they can do all sorts of fun stuff uh, about making a new kind of user interface and know where you're looking. On, on the dash and and make sure that your eye is paying attention to the right thing, um, you know. And that's just one little sensor. I mean, I, there's a mo this is the first consumer electronics gadget that I know of that knows where you're aimed, you know, full time. Because if I look up, it turns on, right? Mm -hmm. um, and and the sensors are firing, and, and Google hasn't explained what they're going to study with that. Add on, I, I mean, if we go ten years in the future, um, uh, we we went to SRI. Uh, where the internet was developed and uh, Siri was developed and Nuance, a bunch of stuff. HDTV was invented there. And um, they, they are doing research for DARPA uh, to study how suicidal somebody is. They're trying to figure out, um, you know, mostly for veterans that come back that have PTSD, trying to figure out are they really, really suicidal or are they just, uh, you know, hitting some other kind of depression. And they can already tell just by you reading text. Um, they can already tell 60, 70 percent of the time that somebody's highly suicidal. So think about a world 10, 15, 20 years from now that uh, these things are going to really know your thoughts at some level, and know your sentiment, and know uh, what you're thinking a little bit, and what your nervous system is doing. Um, plus, I, I add on uh, all the sensors that are coming that study all sorts of stuff about your blood makeup uh, at home. Um, you're going to know, you know, 
if you're diabetic, you're going to know exactly that you ate the ba uh, bad food, <laughs> you know, <laughs> and, and that you're not exercising enough or whatnot. And we're already getting devices like the Nike Fuel Band and Fitbit and Jawbone Up and stuff that tell us that we're not active enough. But these things are going to get hyper smart in the next five years. Well, that just sort of adds to the problem, that adds to the question. I mean, you can talk about the benefits, and certainly healthcare, I think there are tremendous opportunities and benefits to these connected, um, contextual, context aware um, devices. But again, it goes back to privacy. Who ultimately has control for what happens with all that data that's collected? Um, and, and uh, you know, is it, is it up to the consumer to, to understand? Privacy policies? Is it up to the government? Is it up to individual companies to establish policies that make sense? It's it's a really hard problem because, like on my cell phone, I already have 250 apps, right? And everybody has a different 250 apps on their phone. And how, who's in charge? You know, all these little companies, you know, well, what happens if a bigger company buys that company? Does the privacy system change? Does anybody even read these privacy systems? Right. Just heck, just go to google.com slash privacy and look at what Google knows about you. It knows every search, every calendar item, uh, every email, and it's using that stuff to serve us, right? Um, both advertising, but also, um, you know, it tells me all sorts of stuff in my in my glass and on my cell phone that I searched for. Like like it knew I would. Uh, my favorite sports teams is is the 49ers. How did they know that? Oh, I searched for them. Oh, geez. Now all of a sudden the system added that into my Google Now uh, cards. Right. right. Well, so again, I see the benefits, and yeah. But there's a lot of benefits, and, a lot of benefits. and Google does all, get its mission, but all all technologies do have downsides. You know, uh, cars kill 37,000 people a year on the roads. You know, or you know, people die in cars, mm -hmm. uh, and yet we all drive because there's a huge benefit to driving. I, you know, I need to go to work and earn a earn a buck. You know. <laughs> And I, I can't do that if I don't use my car. So I take I take that risk of getting killed on Highway 92 here in Half Moon Bay, you know, b because of the utility. And you know, there are going to be downsides. There are going to be frictions. There's going to be people fired because this eye sensor sensed I was drunk at work or something like that. Right. <laughs> and your eyes are moving back and forth and whatnot. We can tell exactly. Um, <laughs> You, you talked about just you made a, a brief comment there about people getting fired based on privacy practices. And one of the yeah. things about what we love about technology is it's disruptive overall. So as you look at this um, this sort of coming age of of uh, context aware um, devices, smart devices, the Internet of Things, however we want to term that, you know, what, what what industries do you think are most likely to be disruptive? Who needs to start preparing their resumes right now? What the, uh, what's the business job categories? I I think every product is going to be affected by this. I mean, I, you know, GoPro is already talking to me about a, a new kind of contextual camera that doesn't just grab uh, pixels, but grabs the context of where it was, who who's in the picture. Uh, you know, Facebook is already starting to do this, but you have to do it by hand. You have right. to manually tag everybody. Well, what if you take a picture and everybody's tagged automatically in the photo? And and by the way. Technically, that's getting easier and easier every day, not just with face detection, but because we're all carrying a, a low-energy Bluetooth radio on our new smartphones, particularly if you have an iPhone with I, iOS 7. Uh, that just got enabled. It's called iBeacon. Uh, iBeacon is the software layer over the radio. And we can now, uh, developers are talking about building all sorts of new fun things to grab context from the world, um, either ourselves or where we are, and put that into a, a photo. You know, think about oh, it could grab what the stocks are today. It could grab what the weather is today. It could grab what the wave height uh, that we're surfing in Half Moon Bay is, because there's a sensor out on the bay here that measures wave he wave height. And um, you know, on and on and on. I'm uh, you know, General Motors is talking about this with the cars. That that the car is going to be contextual. It's going to know who you are and what you like to listen to and um, and where you like to go to eat, and it's going to um, pre-populate the navigation systems with those things, um, and eventually uh, you're going to get a self-driving car that's going to know where to take you, right? It's right. Monday morning, you're probably going to work, and you're even seeing this already if you use Waze, because Waze, when you when you when I cross the geofence outside my house and, and start driving, it asks, are you going to work? Because it's like 9 a.m., on a Monday morning, and you you usually go to work on a, at 9 a.m. on a Monday morning, you know, and it's already trying to get ahead of me and try to guess where I'm going next and trying to serve me uh, 
automatically, right? Um, Union Pacific, an old stodgy railroad company, right? They're putting sensors underneath the, the rails to understand when the engines need to be uh, maintained. They can tell just by having an audio sensor um, about a month ahead of time that a, a car needs to be maintained because it starts making a different noise. General Electric is giving a talk right now. They have a big conference where they're talking about the industrial internet. That's exactly what they're talking about, putting sensors on engines and, and doing things um, uh, to save money, save companies money, and on and on. So, it, yeah, if, I, I can think of almost every job is going to be affected by this. You know, marketers are deeply going to be affected probably quickly. Mm -hmm. um, and we can talk about why. Because, In fact, at the Consumer Electronics Show this year at, at the PrimeSense booth, they were showing um, a system that would watch you uh, shop and know that you are touching a box of Cheerios. Oh, man. And in real time, it could offer you stuff. It could say, hey, if you take three boxes of Cheerios, you'll get 10% off or you'll get an extra 10 points on your loyalty card or something like that. And think about that kind of smart store. This is coming very quickly. And just because these sensors can watch us as we move around the world. You know, I was just at a privacy uh, conference, and they were arguing, what should the sign on on the front of one of these smart stores say? <laughs> you know, right. you're being stocked. <laughs> <laughs> you know? But there are benefits. It's, you're going to get a coupon. You're 10% yeah. off. And we're going to do it. You know, most people have a Safeway loyalty card now where I, sh you know, shop for groceries. Um, and most people don't care that they're studying uh, your buying behavior and sending you ads based on that. Um, you know, we do that because we get discounts and we get served better. We get better coupons in the mail, you know, because, oh, I, they, they know that I like yogurt, so I get coupons for yogurt. I, I, I You know, that's better than uh, getting coupons for stuff I really don't care about. Right, right. So you're optimistic that ultimately consumers are going to make the decision that the benefits outweigh the, the downsides, the risks here. If the, if the companies are smart. Because if the companies are smart and they, and they pitch a utility to you yeah. first, then we'll keep it turned on. If they just do sleazy stuff with the stuff, we're going to turn it off and we're going to uh, not like those brands. So that's a, a lesson for the consumer electronics industry. You better have a clear utility that goes first. Then, you, then we can turn it on and you know, you know, accept the privacy and the stocking kind of technologies. But right, right. if we don't get a utility, we're going to go to some brand that doesn't do that, right? Okay. Clear, clearly, clear utility, clearly communicated, so I understand. Yeah. Look, look, at, look at the Moto X phone, right? It listens to me full time. Now, you know, Google says, oh, that oh, is only listening for a certain phrase. I'm sorry, I'm pretty technical, and I have no way of, a, you know, checking up on that. <laughs> and, yeah. and so I know most people aren't even as technical as me. So, you know, they have to accept it on face value. It's listening to me. You know, this Google Glass is listening to me. I can go, okay, Glass, take a picture, you know, and it's not working for some reason. But <laughs> we'll figure that out. <laughs> but it's, it's listening to me. It's watching where I'm looking, where I'm aimed, right, full time. And if I don't get utility for that, I'm going to use another product. But the Moto X is really cool. I, I can use it in the car without touching it, which in, in New York, by the way, it's five points on your driving record if you're caught touching your phone in, while driving a car. Yeah. Um, it is a real deep problem for our industry that people are using the, these devices while driving. But now you can talk to it and say, hey, okay, Google, now make a call to Miriam Scoble, and it calls my wife mm -hmm. and uh, without touching it. It's really great uh, benefit, and I'll put up with the you know, weird, um, you know, NSA kind of fears uh, for that benefit. Right. No, that, that's, uh, your enthusiasm is contagious, and, and, and I know most of our listeners will, or, or join us in our tech enthusiasm, but the, the, fr the frightening factor is there. So beyond privacy concerns, what, what are the barriers, what are the challenges to sort of implement this, this world of the age of, this next age of context? Well, um, we need better sensors. Uh, you know, we need people to uh, see the benefit, you know, and not get scared by it. Uh, we need companies to really step up how they communicate about privacy. Um, I think, you know, Google is doing a fairly good job because they're transparent. First of all, you can go to google.com slash privacy and see everything it's collecting on you. It's not quite good in that um, if I see a mistake it made, because sometimes sensors get it wrong, and I'll explain why. I, I live on a golf course, 
and I, I was using an early version of Saga, a little contextual app, and it kept giving me information about golf. I really don't like golf at all. <laughs> I just live on a golf course, and the sensor sensed, oh, you are always on a golf course, so you must love golf. <laughs> no, I, I don't like golf at all. So there, And on that app, there was no way to correct the data, and there was no way to say, I hate golf, and tell it to shut up about golf. <laughs> um, and... Um, and so that's the second thing, make the data correctable. And the industry is moving there. Even the sleazier companies uh, that are collecting a lot, a lot of data on our consumer behavior on the web are um, making it so that you can see the data and correct the data. And then um, let us turn it off once in a while. Now, on that topic, you know, I, uh, I usually am wearing a jacket made by a Scotty Vest or Scott Jordan in, in the... So, uh, in uh, Sun Valley, Idaho, and he's talking about making uh, pockets that are transmission proof, that are NSA proof. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you know, you might joke, but I sp I was given a speech a week ago at Maker Fair in New York, and a kid said, "I already have one of those." He okay. made his own. He made his own uh, transmission proof case. <laughs> so the and, market is responding. Technol innovation is yeah. Responding. Yeah, you know, and you, you, most people don't know how deeply you're being studied. For instance, uh, if you're in New York and you have the Easy Pass RFID uh, system, so you can go through uh, the toll gates without stopping and paying cash, um, you you might think that's only for using uh, for only uh, when you go through the toll gates. No, they're actually pinging your radio as you drive through town, so they are watching traffic flows with these things, and if you're uh, you know, a drug dealer, they're going to they're gonna use that data in court, I'm pretty sure, you know, to prove that you were at this street corner at this time, you know, <laughs> it's, like, it's like, and most people don't realize that this stuff can be used against them that way, right? Um, so, yeah, we are going to uh, hack the system and figure out how to, how to stay off it if we want to. <laughs> Big Brother's watching, but we can hack around it. Me, me, I'm all in. <laughs> all, well, no, I can tell. Stock, oh. stock me. I put it. I put up everything on Twitter and Facebook and Foursquare. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You can even tell what kind of music I'm listening to on Facebook. It's all public. You can study it all you want. No, you're just out there. I'm out there. I, I find it, it actually improves my life because people, uh, you know, see what kind of whether I'm listening to Skrillex or opera, and yeah, some of them make fun of my musical taste, but other people say, "Oh, you're listening to Skrillex? You know, that's so last year." Um, here's you know, here's a Spotify playlist you should check out. This has happened to me, you know. And some guy sends me a whole playlist of cool new modern music, and I was like. That's cool, That's you know. Cool. I would I, I wouldn't yeah. have gotten that if I hadn't shared my uh, experience through life, right? Right. Well, we'll, we'll have a whole discussion about music and industry form and how you go from opera to Skrillex. That's a whole another conversation. You referenced earlier about the implications of this for big for business, and we've talked about it a little bit. But can you sort of summarize where you see? Yeah, for businesses, it means two things. Uh, one, we're going to see our business in very deep detail, you know. Um, and I I really didn't even understand what. That meant until it, I went, you know, at SRI again. I saw a uh, system uh, workstation that watches you work, and it has an eye sensor, so it knows everything you see on the screen, and it records that in real time in a database. Now, yes, they're they're building this for DARPA, so that uh, somebody who is building, uh, you know, running drones and killing people at the government. Uh, they they will have a record of exactly what they looked at on the screen. Do they process the right information? Do they see the right information? Um, how did they arrive at their decision? You know, everything, every keystroke, every gaze on the screen is captured on this system. And you might say, well, that's, you know, never going to happen to me. But uh, I've seen eye sensors now that use a standard webcam like this Logitech that I'm using and is already looking at where my eyes are looking at the screen and is already able to, by the way, uh, capture how old you are, uh, mm -hmm. what your gender is, and whether you're happy or sad. So you smile yeah. and it says happy and you go, mm, and it says sad. <laughs> and I was like, whoa. In fact, I think we're going to see uh, some, of the, some of these systems are going to come out at next year's uh, Consumer Electronics Show. And... Uh, yeah, you know, so you're going to have a standard webcam on a Mac or a Dell machine, and it's going to be able to see a lot of data about you. But let's make it a little bit more real. Think about Uber. You know, I, on my mobile phone, I use Uber to get rides around towns, around cities. And uh, Uber now knows every uh, transaction, every where every employee is in real time, where every customer is in real time. And right? that'll be the ne next thing we talk about. Um, 
and and he sees every bit of detail about his business. His employees are getting um, Travis, who runs the company. He his system uh, rates the employees in real time. You know, when I worked at Microsoft, I had to wait six months to get reviewed, mm -hmm. and there was a lot of political stuff going on behind the scenes. Hey, man, yeah. <laughs> because. Plug. We weren't reviewed in real time as we did tasks. Well, every Uber driver gets reviewed in real time. And by the way, every customer does too. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> if you vomit in an Uber cab, you won't get rides <laughs> no more, right? <laughs> uh, I just came out a week ago in an Uber ride. He's like, oh, you're a good customer. Like, how do you know? He's like, I've got it right here. Yeah. Yeah, every customer is being reviewed and every employee is being reviewed in real time, right? So bad ones get washed out of the system. Yeah. Um, so, th yeah, think if you don't have that level of detail about your business, then you need to worry because your competitor is building systems like this to know everything in real time and to see new patterns, right? And understand new business opportunities before you're seeing them and get to where the new business opportunity is before you even know about it, right? Uh, Uber knows where all the rides are going today, you know, and, and can direct more cabs to heavy locations. And is even building systems to get ahead because they know oh oh every time there's a ball game a lot of cabs a lot of rides all of a sudden happen when the game's over well you can do an internet lookup for that right you can go to San Francisco Giants webpage and look for um, uh, the schedule and look for when the game is going to get out and make some guesses and then have more cabs in in that neighborhood ready to go when the ga game gets out and and so if you don't have that data about your business you're at a real disadvantage to other people. So that's one thing. And then uh, the second thing is we we are going to know our customers in a lot deeper detail. If um, and where where should I go with that? I, I live right by the Half Moon Bay Ritz, right? And at the Ritz, there's four computer systems that run the property. There's a open table computer that runs their main restaurant. There's a spa finder computer that runs their uh, spa. Uh, they have a computer system that runs the rooms. You know when you check in. And there's a third, a fourth one that runs their cheap restaurant that I forget the name of. Um, and none of these systems talk to each other. <laughs> you know, um, they don't know anything about me. I've been, I've checked in on Foursquare, I don't know, 260 times at the Ritz, and they don't know anything about me. Now, certain people at the Ritz know me, right, and know that I like, uh, you know, Ladera wine. You know, the winemaker there already knows what I can afford and what. I like so he uh, he has a context for who I am, right. but if he's not there, I have to tr retrain the next employee who uh, you know who's there tonight, and it's frustrating. In the future, that ain't gonna be the case. <laughs> They're gonna know everything about me. And by the way, if I go to the Ritz in London. All that data is going to travel with me, and they're going to know everything about me at the at the Ritz in London, and they're going to serve me better. And you might say, "Well, that's freaky. I don't want that." But uh, Disney World is doing this with their best customers already. They're putting right. a band on you called the Magic Band. Mm -hmm. You wand in at rides, and all of a sudden, stuff happens to you and your family because of what rides you're on. You know, if you if you go to only SpongeBob rides, all of a sudden, the SpongeBob character comes up to you and your family and says, "Hey, what's up?" You know, right. and and you get to take pictures, and all of a sudden, your kids are thrilled because they were served in a new way, and all of a sudden, you're like a lifelong Disney. Kid fan, you know, and you're always going to take your kids back there because they serve you in a really deep, interesting way. So, um, you know, if, uh, Vin Tank, for instance, studies everybody who says the it's something about wine online. Uh, by the way, we're already doing that 1.1 million times a day. Uh, we're tweeting about wine, you know, and there's Audience FM that's studying uh, music audiences this way. I On and on, you're, if you don't know your customer, and none of us do, <laughs> Even at you know where I work is one of the best service organizations in the world. We really don't know our customer in very deep detail. We don't know their. We haven't even started hooking in Facebook or what they're saying on Twitter into their customer profiles. I mean, some of us are, but it's early days. This is going to be a major trend. And if you don't know your customer in deep detail, you're you, again you're going to be at a disadvantage to companies that do d know them and serve them better. So we're short on time, but message. Yeah. For, for businesses need to use this data to understand your, your customer and market directly to them. You need to be clarity in your privacy and and the benefits that, that come out of whatever connectivity that, that you're offering um, and, and, and that, that nimbleness, right? Um, be innovative, be first, and understand how to use this uh, this new age of context to communicate in a different way with your customers. Yep. Is that a fair summary? 
Fair salmon, you know. And <laughs> it's, uh, well, thank you so much for joining us. It's going right. to be fun. I think 2014 is going to be a lot of fun to be at the Consumer Electronics Show. Oh, it's you know, the it's, show on Earth. Yeah, well, it's it's rare that I look forward to the CES show. Usually I look, you know, it's like, oh, geez, I, crowds and drudgery, you know. <laughs> but this time, uh, this year, there really is real innovation coming in wearables. And uh, and these low energy Bluetooth radios are really going to change the world. Uh, the baseball association is putting these things in. I, have you seen one of these little radios? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Do you know what I'm talking about? They're they're about. little ten dollar radios. They look like a coin. They run for two years on a battery. Uh, you know, lots of people who come to CEA build them. Broadcom and and other companies are building them, and they cost about ten dollars wholesale, so thirty dollars retail. And you you can put them around things. So let's say you. Uh, baseball is going to put them in all the uh, baseball stadiums. And as you walk, uh, you know, in the stadium, your iPhone is going to change. Your iPhone uh, is going to know that you're at the front gate of the baseball stadium, and it's going to show you information uh, about being at the front gate or going through the front gate. And if you walk by, uh, you know, a certain restaurant, it can do other things. It can show you, hey, inside is a menu. And, by the way, five of your friends are inside because we know that too. <laughs> you know, and why don't you join them at the bar? You know, <laughs> it's like so. As you walk around the world with your phone, uh, soon you're going to be interacting with all these radios um, all over the place, and it's it's going to allow baseball to serve you very differently at a baseball stadium than they can today. It's it's, uh, it's an exciting new world. We are, I'm yeah. sure, going to see the Internet of Things is going to be a major theme at the 2014 CES. Um, you know, we, we'll see the end products, but I think you're absolutely right. Some of these embedded devices, and 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 um, we, we've talked, we've seen flexible sensors that provide opportunity for new form factors that lead to new products, new technology. Or we're, we're, we're as excited as you are, if not more so. Yep. Good see you there. Time. Thank you. Well, we'll see you in a couple of weeks in Los Angeles at our industry forum. Um, yep. 22nd. Um, again, it's Robert Scoble at Scobleizer. Um, thank you so much for joining us. I'm Jeff Joseph. You can follow me at J.A. Joseph on Twitter. And uh, we'll, for this recording, thank you so much for joining us. We'll see you in a couple of weeks. Yeah.